Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video. This time it's going to be another World Chalice combo tutorial for the post-Savage Strike capabilities of how I'm looking towards playing this deck if I were to play it at all. Basically, we want to abuse our friend Borlode Savage Dragon for it being a generic level 8 synchro. It gets big, it gets swollen, it's an Omni Negation, and it's very easy to make with minimal cards clogging up your main deck in this deck. So what I'm going to be showing you is another World Chalice combo set. I'm going to be showing you a combo, and I'm going to show you a variation on it to change the results a little bit I am going to be giving you complete math for how this breaks down when you get to those stages again but hopefully this video even with showing you the variation will not be as long as the video I did yesterday so I'm gonna try and go through this at least as you know quickly yet thoroughly as possible because this is a technical deep dive into the ways that you play this deck around there's a lot of things you have to factor in when you're trying to play the deck in this manner which is how I'm trying to play it I'm not trying to rely on drawing into ferret in my opening hand and doing a com play completely contrived around rescue ferret I'm trying to play the rest of my deck draw a lot of cards off of an Ingirsu draw two to three and then a Saryuja to try to dig for rescue ferret but as you can see I'm still playing a 48 card list 43 cards left in deck and five cards in hand for this list, I have changed some cards around. I am playing five copies of Rescue Ferret. There's three copies of Ferret in my deck, and then two copies of Emerging Rescue Rescue, which directly searches the Ferret. So the math I'm going to give you takes those numbers into account. So you would have to change the numbers and uh, do your own math for uh, any different ratios of Ferret, if you're playing four or six or whatever, or three. But I digress. But so, first thing I'm going to show you is an Ingusu draw two into a Saryuja, into a Gumblar for four, into a Borload Savage Dragon. And all it requires you to do is to draw Rescue Ferret either in your opening hand or at the point when you're Ningirsuing and Saryujuing. And I'm going to give you all the math for that later. So, you start the playoff with summoning Orphus Scorpio and discarding a monster to get Darling Cobra out of your deck. Darling Cobra is going to trigger its effect to activate, searching Brilliant Fusion. Now, if you were just going to make a Saryuja here, uh, you could just send Trick Clown, and then that's, you know, good. The Trick Clown also happens to make you take life, uh, so you can trigger your Emerging Rescue Rescue, so that's neat. Uh, but basically, we're just going to send Venus off of the uh, off the Brilliant Fusion as our light target. And then we're going to conduct our additional Normal Summon, tributing one of the Preta Plants, because they're both dark, so we want to make Ebe. And we, so we need a monster that's not dark, so we're going to use the Seraph Knight to go into that. So, we're going to link the Seraph Knight and the World Legacy World Chalice into Eve the World Chalice Priestess. And one of the, the variation I'm going to show you on this combo is that you can turn this combo from an Ingirsu Draw 2 into an Ingirsu Draw 3 play. But it requires you to play a second Eve in your extra deck, and you have to cut something for that to make room for it. And that might be Nightmare Phoenix, uh, if you wanted to make that cut. I personally build my deck... Uh, for a competitive play environment, even if I'm not intending on taking them to an event, it's just a mental exercise to keep myself on my toes with deck building of making sure every deck I build is built in a way to try and be competitively successful. So Nightmare Phoenix to me would come up more than the increased percentage of the rest of this play. But we'll get into that later and I will show you that variation because it is a little bit of a different play. But so, World Legacy World Chalice summons these, Lee searches World Legacy World Chalice, um, and then you're going to go into Orum with the Eeb and the Lee, and you're not going to trigger Eeb here, but you are going to use Orum's effect, tributing the Guard Dragon off to special the Venus from your grave. Now, I always summon it in the center zone, simply because uh, it's just like the easiest to not screw up <laughs> your uh, linking order if you just put it there. But so you're going to use the Venus to then summon all three Shine Balls out of your deck. So you have used the Predaplant Scorpio play to access your Venus from deck, which is nice. Uh, gives you a bunch of extra materials, but it does in turn affect our, uh, our percentages for drawing extenders and things like that off of Saryuja. Because if you remember the Venus combo I showed you yesterday, had an incredibly high percentage for drawing extenders because those extenders were things that weren't used. The Scorpio, Lone Fire, Brilliant Fusion, and all that. In this combo, we're using all of them out of the gate. We've used Scorpio by proxy. That means we've used Lone Fire because we're not going to Lone Fire into anything. We've used Brilliant Fusion, and we've used Venus. So it basically becomes... Ride or die, draw Soul Charge or Rescue Ferret, but the numbers are still pretty positive, as we'll get into later. But so, you're going to link the Venus and a Shine Ball into Nightmare Phoenix here, and then you are going to link one of the Shine Balls into Imduk, and then you're going to link another Shine Ball into Imduk. And so, what we're going to do is get the Ningirsu draw two here. So we're going to go into Ningirsu with the Nightmare Phoenix and this Imduk. We want to leave this one because we want it to be next to Ningirsu. 
And so that'll special Ningirisu, Ningirisu will trigger, and then Imduk will trigger to special summon World Legacy World Chalice from our hand. And then from here, we will just draw two cards. So now, at this point, we can go straight into Saryuja. Another cool thing about this combo sequence is that it has not used Guard Dragon's Grave Effect, uh, which can come up later in the turn, depending on if, if you like have to gather more resources to extend into another Saryuja. Um, if you keep missing your ferrets, uh, but like usually uh, you'll see what I mean about how like you shouldn't be missing your ferrets. Like it's statistically still in your favor to get to ferret. But so you're gonna link away the Orum, the Imduk, and the uh, the World Legacy World Chalice and the uh, Predator Plant into Saryuja. It does not matter which side you put it on because Nagirsu is here. You'll always have three zones open. You'll either have this, these two, or these two, and then the one on the other side, Nagirsu. So you're gonna trigger Saryuja to draw four. And now, at this point, you've drawn six cards. So now, I'm going to finish out the combo, but then I'm going to give you some math. But so, at this point, we did get to Ferret, which is all well and good. We're going to put back any Garnets that we uh, that we don't want um, for, like, uh, that we need, like, to stay in our deck like that Steam did. And then we're going to use the Saryuja, specialty Rescue Ferret. Ferret gets to use its effect. We're going to go for Ali. We're going to go for... Eva, and we're going to go for Steam the Cloak. So, it does not matter which zones you summon these in, because they are all going to be used and uh, and vacate their zones, respectively. But so, we're going to sink the Steam and the Lee away into Blackwing Graham the Shining Star to be a level 5 Blackwing to use with the Steam. The Steam triggers, we get our token, and then from here we get to use Steam's effect, tributing the Eva, specialing the Steam, and then the uh, Eva gets to trigger which allows us to banish two fairies to then search for Lee plus Herald of Orange Light. And so now from here, it should be pretty standard because it all just ties up into the same neat little bow that the previous combo sequence did. Make Link Karibo, make the Gumblar, and I always make the Gumblar in the center zone. Um, at least It's at least a habit that I've started making myself fall into because it leaves a zone open. Um, if you made Gumblar here, then Borload and summon Link Karibo, you wouldn't have any zones open for like a follow-up turn with like succession. But if you summon them in the way I'm about to show you, then things work out a little bit better. Uh, we're not going to trigger Ningirisu's effect. And what we're going to do is we're going to synchro with the uh, Steam and the Gram into Borload Savage Dragon. All of our stuff is going to trigger. Our Gumblar is going to trigger. Our Steam is going to trigger. Borload's going to trigger to equip. We're going to equip Ningirisu. We're going to get... Uh, two cards taken out of our hand, and then our opponent is going to discard two cards, and then we get a Steam Token, which gets to be tributed for Link Rebo. Now from here, we've got four cards in hand. We can actually increase this number if we needed to. We can increase it by one because we have the Guard Dragon left in Grave, and the Lee's Graveyard Effect has not been used this turn, so I'm going to demonstrate that here and now. So you use the Guard Dragon, you just revive any vanilla, next to uh, your sh your stuff, and then you use the Lee's Grave effect, sending that vanilla to Grave, adding Lee to hand. So now you put yourself back up to, in this instance we have five, but say you had used like uh, something that had to be used as an extender, and for some reason you were down to like one or two cards, and you didn't want to be that low, or you wanted to like set cards you sided in, like Red Reboots, or Imperial Order, or Anti-Spells, or whatever, just to like win more after you've already done this. Uh, or you want to set these Call by the Graves, for example, um, and you'd played Midbreaker Field, so you're down a card in your hand. You would need a second card in your hand, and you can easily get there uh, off of this. But so, in turn, and then during the opponent's draw phase, you tribute for the Link Karibo, and the Link Karibo gets summoned next to the Gumblar. Now, noteworthy uh, is that you can't play around Mech Knights with this, but, I mean, hey, uh, that's fine, right? But so, you discard two from your opponent's hand, you have an Omni Negation, seems all well and good. Now, math time. The chances of you drawing Rescue Ferret in this deck, in this deck that I'm showing you, the five copies of Rescue Ferret, the three Ferret and the two copy of Emerging Rescue Rescue, off of drawing six cards, the two off Ningirisu, the four off Saryuja, your chances of drawing into that with the way I showed you this combo of starting with Scorpio is 65.98%. So it's still over 50%. It's still favorable. But if you started to play with Lone Fire Blossom, thinning the three Lone Fires out of your deck into Scorpio, you've thinned your deck by three cards. So your percentage of drawing Ferret goes up. Your percentage then goes up to 70.17% chance of if you started with Lone Fire instead of Scorpio to thin your deck by more cards and then draw. 
Now, if you wanted to draw Ferret or Soul Charge, because Soul Charge would allow you to just guaranteed extend into another Saryuja, and even if you didn't draw Ferret, you'd still be able to Gumblar for four and have like a really impressive board, whether or not you had Borload Savage Dragon on it or not. Adding the Soul Charge into the mix makes it a sixth card that you could draw off of that Saryuja, drawing six cards. That makes a 73.27% chance to draw one of those six cards, one of the five Ferrets or the Soul Charge. And again, if you thin the Lone Fires out of your deck, thinning your deck by three cards, that goes up to 77.33%. So, very favorable numbers in terms of that regard. But there's another combo variation to this that, like I said, requires you playing a second Eeb in your extra deck, but that allows you to draw seven cards. And when you do that, it increases your percentages a fair amount. So I'm going to show you that and then give you the math for that and compare it and do all that. So let me reset this real quick. All right, so this is going to be the exact same combo, except we're going to do a variation to that combo that is going to allow us to draw three cards off the Ningirsu instead of two, uh, which is going to require us to have a second Eeb in our extra deck. And it's not a huge change, but it does change placements, so it is worthwhile to show you. But so you're going to use Venus from your deck to make the Seraph Knight, off the Brilliant Fusion, you get off the Scorpio, and then you're going to make uh, an Eeb after you additional normal summon the World Legacy World Chalice over one of your Preta plants. Now you're going to make one of the Eebs, and then you're going to get the World Legacy World Chalice effect for Lee Guard Dragon, and then your Lee is going to search for your World Legacy World Chalice. I'm trying to do this as fast as the system will let me. But so, then you're going to go into Aurum with these two. Not use Eeb's effect, but then use Aurum, tributing this to revive the Venus from Grave. So get Venus back here. Now this combo is uh, is uh, a wild one. Is this one? This one's kind of strange, uh, but you'll you'll appreciate the hustle. I guarantee. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're going to activate Venus your three times, and you are then going to use the Scorpio and the Venus, because they are different types and attributes to make the second copy of Eeb right here. But now from here, we have no more Link 2s in our extra deck because of how tight it is. But we have three M-Ducks. <laughs> so we're going to use all three M-Ducks to make one Ningirsu boy. Uh, so you do this, and uh, yeah, it, uh, it works out. The math works out. So, we're going to make it an Ingirsu with one, two, three <laughs> Mducks. And so that's going to trigger. The Mduck is going to trigger. Uh, we'll trigger them all. Sure. In, in a real tournament, you would not trigger all of them because once you specialed one from your hand, you would have to uh, reveal the rest of your hand to your opponent to confirm you can't summon it anymore. Um, but so you draw three here. And then you have the Guard Dragon engraved that you get to utilize. We actually use the Guard Dragon in this combo, so the other combo only draws two, but it saves the Guard Dragon and allows you to use that to supplement the card that you missed out on drawing in your hand by adding Lee back. But, in this instance, you use it for the combo because you already drew the extra card anyway, so you don't need to supplement that card. So, what we're then going to do is we're just going to go straight into the Saryuja Skull Dread, and at this point, the placement does matter. You summon Saryuja on the opposite side, of the board of wherever the Ningirsu is. And so then you've drawn an additional four cards, you've drawn seven. So, breaking down the math for this. This this combo finishes off the exact same way as the rest of the combo strings do, so I shouldn't have to finish it out for you. Breaking down the math of what the incentive is to do this, to cut Nightmare Phoenix from the extra deck, in my instance, and play the second copy of Eeb, is that across the board you get about a 6 to 7 percent increase in probability to get to your ferret or ferret soul charge. Now if you remember off drawing 6, you got a 65 percent, a 70 percent chance of getting, uh, a 65 to 70 percent chance of drawing ferret off of the Saryuja when you were drawing 6 cards, and uh, that's obviously uh, var uh, variable based off if you uh, thin your deck with Lone Fire or not. And then to draw Ferret or Soul Charge off of the first Saryuja, it was 73% if you didn't use Lone Fire, and if you did use Lone Fire, it was 77.33%. Now, if you're drawing seven cards, those numbers go up, as they obviously would. To draw your Ferrets only off of the first Saryuja that you make, off of this Saryuja drawing seven cards, that goes from a 65.98% chance up to a 72.28% chance. If you used Lone Fire Blossom to thin your deck, that goes from a 70.17% chance up to a 76.39% chance. So, raw 7-6% to 6 gains. 
Now, if you wanted to draw Ferret or Soul Charge, if we lop Soul Charge into there to make another Saryuja, that turns, you know, there's six possible cards you could draw there, the five Ferrets and the one Soul Charge. Your probability of drawing six cards was 73.27, uh, but your probability of getting it in seven goes up to 79.21% chance. And then if you thin your deck with Lone Fires, that goes up to a flat 83% from the 77.33 uh, that it was. So again, six to seven percent increases. And that is rather significant. That is a very significant jump in uh, what your capability of drawing these cards is. However, is it necessary to do this to increase your deck's consistency variance from a seven out of 10 or 7.5 out of 10 to an eight out of 10, right? It's you're only getting that extra little sliver of how many times out of 10 games you will, you know, see a difference. But Nightmare Phoenix, in my instance, the card I cut for the second Eve to show you this, will probably come up a little bit more often because variants in game states do exist. And you do kind of want some cards to be able to go second. Now, whether or not the second Saryuja is needed, further testing could warrant maybe cutting that and playing the second Eve to make this always possible. But... Basically, I just wanted to show you this variance so that we can, uh, so that you can get a better understanding of uh, of how this needs to go. But then from here, it's obvious how you finish this off. You just special the uh, the rescue ferret and you do your stuff. So I'm uh, I'm by no means a math major, but I do know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Smile. Uh, but so from here, you just do the same old, same old that we were doing previously, and we're going to end up gumbling for four. With uh, with a Borload Savage Dragon on the field, and we'll end up with uh, with uh, the same number of cards in hand as we did in the previous combo. Because instead of adding Lee back, um, which we could do, it's very much a possibility that we could just add Lee back. Um, we're going to uh, just do other things. But so, using these to make the Gram, the Steam summons a token, and then you use the Steam to go into the Eva and all that sort of stuff. But so. If you enjoyed this combo tutorial and you want to see more stuff like it, I implore you to hit that subscribe button and enable notifications. It would help out a ton. I'd love to welcome you on board. If you want to talk to me and some other like-minded people on a daily basis, my channel's Discord server is linked down below, as well as if you want to catch my very frequent live streams, my almost daily live streams. Um, I'm not doing a live stream today, unfortunately, because I've got something that came up in terms of uh, club plans for a club that I'm in. But most of the time, I stream, I'm trying to stream every weekday with minor exception. So if you want to catch that, link to the Twitch page is down below as well. So make top of logic, and then we make the boar load savage, and then from here it should be pretty clear cut where we are established. But, so, yeah, I would like to thank you for watching, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to finish out this combo. And I'm just going to tell you to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as per usual. Where's this uh, Gumblar doing? It's discarding two. Discard two with Goomblar. The Goomblar dragon. Gumbagio dragon. So, Link Kribo's engrave. We're all set up. We're ready to go. You could add a card back with... Uh, you could rotate a card out for Lee if you wanted to. Uh, but we're at five cards, so it does not matter. So, draw phase using the Linky Karibo, and it should be pretty clear from here. I'm just finishing it out so you, you guys understand. <laughs> there, I don't want there to be any like gaps in logic that people might, uh, that people might uh, uh, fabricate. But anyway, that is the entirety of these two variations. Hopefully this video, uh, even in its edited parts, ended up uh, shorter than the combo I showed you yesterday. But like I said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.